what's up guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below I would love to have you guys at my channel but this video is going to be a little bit different today I <sighs> obviously the universe is speaking to myself and a few other women that I talk to on a regular and after watching Keisha Kaor's video or Jeremy and Keisha on YouTube or is it Keisha and Jeremy either way after watching her birth vlog of her brand new baby girl, Baby J, um, <sighs> I'm trying to find the right words to say. I'm trying to find the real words to say. And the honest reaction, but different reaction, kind of more so response to her video. For those of you who aren't new to my channel and know that a year ago on June 25th, 2019, I gave birth via C-section to my baby girl, Kitoko Ajay. And at the time we were in Fort Hood. So I'll just give like a quick little spiel for anyone that is new to my channel. And I appreciate you if you are new. <sighs> a year ago, I gave birth via C-section. Scheduled cesarean, so I knew everything that was happening. I was at the military hospital at 5 30 6 30 that morning i believe it was 5 30. either way i had to do the pre-op work the day before and just a whole bunch of things happened so i was excited i was ready to meet my bare new baby at the time of my cesarean things went wrong and they gave me a bunch of medication that i've never had before and of course me being me and wanting to read up on stuff they were just like either take it or don't but if you don't take it this is what's going to happen to your baby. So much things, so many things happened that I did not say in the video. But now that we are no longer in the military, I can freely speak on anything that I want to without getting my spouse in trouble. Anyone that is not in the military knows that us wives, if we say certain things, sometimes it can get to our spouse's commander, sometimes our the spouse's unit. It can get ugly quick. One thing about being in the military, you do not want to upset your husband more so than he already is and that's what leads to a lot of problems in military marriages. We as wives get sick and tired of basically watching our husbands be, for lack of better words, slaves for people who don't really give a damn about them. That being said, schedule cesarean went the way that it went. They gave me a medication so that I didn't vomit. I was aware of that medication, but you're not supposed to eat prior to having the cesarean. So I wasn't wasn't quite clear as far as why I needed to drink the substance that honestly tastes horrible. Prior to doing that, signing a whole bunch of paperwork, being though I was in a military hospital, it's a teaching hospital. And I am a emergency veterinary technician when I'm not a stay at home mom as well as an entrepreneur. So I know about being taught certain things in the medical in the medical field. They get paid a lot less, but I know all about teaching a student. I, for one, was not comfortable with the student doing my spinal. And I had voiced that. I was not comfortable. I voiced it very clearly. I don't want no student playing around with me and my baby. I don't want to be a test dummy, and I apologize for that. This is my and my daughter's life. I cannot play with that and I cannot stress that enough. Long story short, I signed the wrong thing and I signed for a student to actually place my spinal. Did not tell you guys this in my birth vlog. The student performed my, my spinal and if you have ever had a spinal or epidural, they have that big needle that they are going to put into your back. And that is to numb you for the actual medication that is supposed to numb you. They missed. They said that my spine was crooked. Here's the issue that I have with that. This was my third cesarean. My spine was never once crooked prior to the other cesareans that I had. And they were um, civilian doctors. Civilian being non-military doctors. I had a emergency doctor do it in Delaware for my first baby and my second baby was a scheduled cesarean so I knew and he was my GYN he's a very credible GYN or OBGYN he was very credible there was no problems with that cesarean at all never once said that my back was my spine was crooked so it kind of what behooved me was <laughs> they had said my spine was crooked and that the student could not perform my spinal then. 
So obviously I'm already anxiety's high because it hurts. It does not feel the best. So anxiety's high and I'm trying to figure out what the crap they're trying to do to me because I'm being stuck like a pincushion at this point. And finally the anesthesiologist numbs me. And I'm like, okay, great. Get really, really hot. If you've ever had a cesarean, you know as soon as they numb you, your body gets really, really hot. And you're numb. Or you think you're numb. In my case. And they're performing their surgery. They're doing their checks. They're saying, you know, wh what my name is, what I'm supposed to be having as far as a girl, obviously. But they... Sorry, I thought I heard my daughter. They go down the laundry list of checkpoints of what they're supposed to do during a cesarean. And then my husband is allowed into the room. So I'm hooked up to the monitors. My husband's there. He has my camera. And they begin. Uh, I'm not quite sure at what point in the cutting process I started to feel. But I could tell them, hey, something ain't right. So I'm telling my husband, I'm feeling this. And I'm getting more and more scared. So they're giving me medication. The anesthesiologist noticed that my heart rate had gone up and my blood pressure had gone up. And they were asking me, was I okay? And I'm like, no, I'm not okay. I, I'm feeling this. And they're telling me I feel pressure when I don't. And I'm trying to explain to them, look, I'm not, I'm not stupid. I have a high threshold for pain. Listen to me when I'm telling you that I feel this. And I am able to lift at least one leg. I should not be able to feel where my legs are. At this point, I should be a quadriplegic at this point. Am I pronouncing that right? I should not be able to do the things that I can do. I'm physically lifting my legs off of the table. Can you not feel that? Can the doctor not see this? So my husband's saying, hey, y'all need to do something. Hey, y'all need to do something. And the reason why I'm saying this and going through my story is because when Jeremy had came back onto the camera and said that they kicked him out, that brought back so many memories that I don't want to remember about my cesarean. Having a baby should be a beautiful experience. Having any baby, whether it be vaginal cesarean, surrogate, however you become a mom, should be a beautiful experience. It should not be as stressful and as crazy as my experience was and a lot of other women's experience is. And I'm not going to get emotional. I'm more so angry. Because I talk to a lot of women and a lot of women say the same thing that they experience the same thing, especially women of color and medical needs aren't being met by medical professionals who sign an oath to take care of people who are getting paid a crazy amount of money to make sure that myself and the fellow women out here are taken care of. Black women are being slaughtered in America, all over the world in childbirth. And it's crazy to me that I'm seeing so many women go through the same thing that I go that I went through. And I know how I felt on that cesarean table. And I know how scared I was. And I know how I wanted to cry. And how I did not get to experience my baby's first cry. Because as soon as they had her out, they knocked my ass out. It's, it's sickening to me that the world that we live in, America, the land of the free, the land of milk and honey, the great USA. It's sad that women of color, brown women, our medical needs aren't being met. A lot of medical professionals have stated, I guess, off the record, a lot of medical professionals have stated that they are less likely to give a woman of color medication because of her color of her skin. And a lot of women who come into the ER, their medical needs aren't being taken seriously because we can take more pain than anyone else. Let me get this, let me get this quote right. Hold on one second. Let me get this statistic correct. Black women have a mortality rate of 17.4 times more than any other ethnicity. And that's per 100,000 births in 2019, or 2018, I apologize. That's 658 women dying. Did you hear about the YouTuber that just passed away? Uh, Thea, is that what her name was? The YouTuber that just passed away, she was pregnant with a baby boy. I'm not quite sure when she was supposed to be due. Nicole Thea, she was 24 years old and she died on July 13, 2020 at eight months pregnant. 
and the cause of death the cause of death what I can't speak the cause of death was a heart attack I know things can happen during pregnancy I know anything can happen hell I had preeclampsia if you don't know what that is that is a blood pressure problem and a protein problem where your body is just trying to kill itself basically the reason why I gave birth to my child at 32 weeks when I was 19 years old scariest experience of my life was because my baby was not moving my baby was dying inside of me at 19 years old do you know how gut-wrenching that is to hear that your baby's gonna die if they don't get her out of you I didn't have my mom there at the hospital I was at the hospital by myself my husband was at work because I told him to go to work he wasn't my husband at the time but I told him to go to work I said it's going to be routine my GYN at the time who now is not practicing in the medical field at all now he told me that my baby was fine, that I should just go to the hospital for a non-stress test. That non-stress test turned into me giving birth three hours later via emergency C-section. In closing, I just want to say congratulations to Keisha and Jeremy on their new baby girl. And this is in no way, shape, form trying to react to her video, but only respond and bring light, shed light on what's really going on in the medical world when it comes to black women. There's a lot more that I could share, but I won't share. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a big old thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Take your time, go slow with me. I want somebody to grow with me. Don't you know? Ain't nobody stopping us. Gonna let go, yeah. I'm gonna let go. Gonna give you control, yeah.